Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's August 24th, 2022. I've uh, been a little while since I did a garden update. And so that's what I'm going to do right now is take a quick walk around the garden plots and see how things are going. Uh, this is the uh, south side of the western garden plot right over here. Uh, I showed some of these plants last week. So we have some of the oregano about to go to seed. The uh, gooseberry plants all in here. Uh, the chives. Uh, flowering at this point all the gooseberries here we have had about one inch of rain just over one inch of rain over this last week and all and uh, and that has been a real blessing uh, I thought one of the things I'd say is that uh, so these are all the gooseberries in here we have weeds I haven't done any weeding uh, recently at all. Thea's been doing harvesting and all. Actually, we'll take a quick peek inside of here. She isn't in here right now, but uh, turn on this light here. But Thea's going through the next batch of uh, red onions. She goes through the process of removing the, the base and the head of each one of the, uh, the red onions. And these have all our, our onion harvest this year has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, <laughs> this is about the smallest ones that we've got here. So she goes through the whole process and she posted a video about that recently. We'll see how many uh, she's got in here. Is it this freezer here? I don't know which freezer. Nope. This is all kale and, and peppers in that one. Yeah, here's the onions in here. And I know that she she gets the onions. I bet you she put them in the fridge down in here. Okay, so she's got a lot of the onions. Oh boy, this thing's heavy. Not this will show up. This is probably a pretty boring video. Smells nice in here. So, anyways, he is making progress with this. She's in getting dog food set for the coming uh, week. And we'll take a quick walk through this western garden plot. And, uh, and maybe I'll go up and take a walk through the second food forest. I tried doing that the other day. Uh, but the uh, I got the green screen of death with my GoPro Hero 7 here. So lots of weeds in the pathway here, which doesn't have a weed mat down. Honeyberries have been doing great. There is some bindweed I can see on it right now. Blueberry bushes are all done uh, producing the blueberries now. They've done great. I've got to get this area ready for transplanting lots of the thornless blackberry plants over into here. And I'll have to get all of these plants out so you could see the corkscrew or curly willows here are really doing great uh, these are all a good three foot tall now they do just fantastic and uh, a couple of the hosta berries and red currants here and here's one of the elderberry plants here the berries are getting pretty full here I don't know if these are showing up. But the birds have been going right to town on them. Beautiful berries. So the, the all of the limbs are just completely laden with berries here. Some of which, which aren't ripe yet, but quite a few are ripe. So the Western Garden Plot, really not harvesting any food out of this, uh, out of this area other than our berries, the honey berries and the blueberries so far this season. I've been totally preoccupied with working down in the, uh, in the forest and installing the roadway near where the beaver ponds are. So that's been occupying a lot of my time. Well, just about all of my time. So here we are at the central garden plot. Uh, 
I did post a video uh, talking about how we removed the broccoli from this bed and the red Russian kale from this bed and we used our cover crop seed mixture uh, getting those started in both beds a lot of hand watering with the wand and now I'm using the uh, an overhead sprinkler system uh, I would say I would say with Ian and I are, are a little bit disappointed in the premier kale now we both enjoy the premier kale uh, the premier kale tastes delicious it's a delicate leaf uh, uh, less fiber more more juice uh, a little bit like romaine uh, lettuce in a sense uh, where my favorite has always been in the past the uh, curly kale um, the you know the uh, red Russian kale is also very good as well but one of the things we thought we'd try this year was uh, putting in the premier kale and it really doesn't like the heat or the drought nearly it doesn't tolerate those conditions and I think it's because you know the, the, the leaves perk right up as soon as we uh, water it but they can't get away with a drip irrigation just once a day unfortunately so the premier kale I, I think this is our last time uh, growing the premier kale uh, it's just a shame uh, the red Russians the one that I harvested from over here I probably should have kept that one to keep going now there's plenty of fresh kale here for us now and we have plenty in our freezers uh, as well uh, the San Marzano tomatoes have been doing absolutely fantastic. The comes out like every other day and gets like a half a bushel of tomatoes or whatever. Uh, this is, uh, these are the two beds where the red onions were located. Thea harvested those and then I reseeded those beds. Uh, this bed is where the, uh, the blue flesh potatoes that I harvested came from and I immediately seeded this the very next day. <clears throat> then a few days later, I went ahead and seeded both of these beds. And just the other day, uh, probably two days ago, maybe three days ago now, uh, Thea pulled back the weed mats from, the, um, from our banana peppers uh, bed here and I decided to start the cover crop while the banana peppers are right here so uh, so that's worked out pretty well so far so the cover crop is going to help to help to stabilize the soil prevent erosion uh, uh, provide food for the microorganisms which uh, the microorganisms are what feed our crops so that we don't need to put uh, fertilizers or put uh, compost on our beds uh, the living mulch does so many different different things that are really beneficial. Uh, the daikon radish down in there, these ones here, will grow up and produce roots like great big carrots and they'll get broken down over the winter months and through next spring as well. Uh, so our cover crop uh, really has been super beneficial and we've only, we just started doing it last year and so far I'm real happy with it. Uh, as well. So let's go around to the eastern garden plot. <clears throat> Sorry this is a little... I just felt the need to try and get another video out uh, on what's going on with the gardens and all. Um, and it's... I've just been... we've both been very very busy lately so it's been a bit crazy. So here we are <coughs> In the eastern garden plot, and uh, this is this is our tunnel for our our scarlet red runner beans, and they're producing really well. I really haven't examined them closely to see do we have pests uh, on them, you know, such as a marmorated stink bug. Uh, we haven't really had any of them on our tomato plants so far. So I'm real happy about that. It is getting a little breezy right now. Did I show a shot going down the tunnel here? This is always so cool. And these these cattle panel trellises make it so nice to harvest the beans when they're time. And, and of course we should try and get the uh, beans up on the trellis 
They're, they go out each way, uh, but we just don't have the time to do that. So uh, I'm uh, uh, Tim from Tim Permaculture's Homestead actually was wondering, uh, he was a little surprised that we have the marmorated stink bugs here as well. We have very, very few of them. Uh, I've only seen two of them this season, but I really haven't been looking for them like I should be looking. I've been completely preoccupied with trying to get the work done in the forest and in the road. Uh, that's like a super high priority for this year, trying to get that accomplished. Uh, and they are, they have gotten to our, uh, to our Macs and our uh, Mac uh, cross apples. Uh, I've seen them on there, uh, at w once I saw them on there. And I could certainly see the lesions from the proboscis uh, lancing the, uh, the uh, the apples and all but otherwise I haven't seen them uh, I did get a question in the past and it just dawned on me now have we seen a decrease in the number of pollinators on uh, on our property and yes and this has been going back almost three years now are certainly our um, mason bees we used to have so many of them the honeybee population is down as well uh, two of the of the of the, um, of right, the the species of wasps are down quite a bit as well, uh, and I don't see as many spiders, uh, and I don't know the reason for that. Uh, certainly, the 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 uh, populations may coincide with different crops that are that are and and the and the weather conditions. And like I said, we just got just over an inch. I'm not sure how much. We were like nine tenths of an inch going into uh, yesterday, and we got sprinkles throughout the day yesterday. So we're probably just over an inch of rain. And I, and so when it's so dry and so dusty, that may interrupt uh, a lot of their their life cycles as well. I, I don't really know for certain. Certainly, I am concerned about the the uh, pet, the insecticides that are being used, uh, and all of our pollinators are certainly exposed to other places other than our property. They go all over the place, and so that's probably taken a hit as well. But our weather patterns have been gradually getting hotter and, and more drought, uh, very very dry during the summer months. We're blessed that at least we get the snow during the winter time, which used to be the, the bane of our existence, all the snow that we get. But uh, enough of me going on with this and all. So the corn, uh, we got this corn in a little bit late because again, I use the earthway cedar and I soaked the seeds ahead of time and they, the earthway cedar could not get them in very well. So I came back through and reseeded there's some dam damsel flies right there. We have those all over in our property and they're absolutely wonderful. Uh, so, and we are blessed that we have, you know, I, I should have mentioned this. We have so many insectivore um, bird species that that is a huge blessing that we have here. Our barn swallows, our kingbirds, uh, uh, our cat birds that we have here as well. I see them more down and back in the forested areas uh, But they they follow me when I'm working and doing uh, road work. They're constantly following me every place I go uh, With any of the equipment because they're picking up bugs constantly uh, The other uh, species I've seen a little bit of a decrease, but I do see them still are our woodcocks and they're eating the insects off the ground. Uh, they aren't up here in our garden areas. They're down in the forested areas. Uh, here's the bed with the, uh, one of the beds with the uh, kidney beans, another bed with the kidney beans. I really haven't been over here. I haven't weed whacked in here. I've only mowed the lawn twice. And, uh, and now it can use another mowing. It's, it's just been so dry, dry here. Uh, this is the, uh, the jalapeno peppers, uh, they've got a ways to go, we've only had a few red ones so far, but, uh, you know, there aren't a bunch of them on here. I'm not sure how well this is showing up. Uh, recently, this, uh, 
This past week I harvested the russet potatoes. Didn't have a big crop out of this. There's still a lot of wood chips breaking down, but immediately after getting the, uh, the russets out, I went ahead and put the cover crop seed down in here. And again, we've, we're trying, uh, since we've had the rain, you can see a little bit more of the chamomile in here. The clover takes so long for it to uh, germinate and to grow. It really does, you gotta be so patient with the, with the clover seed. Uh, the flowers are doing pretty well. And again, I haven't been over, over here working in here and Thea's working her tail off to take care of all the other things in the farm as well. Just taking care of the uh, harvesting and all. Okay, back to the the uh, cattle panel trellis with all of the beautiful, oh there's, I wonder if you can see them, probably not. Of course they zip by so quickly, the hummingbirds, sorry about that. Uh, sweet potato patch over here, uh, we'll have to see how well these guys do, they've been doing pretty darn well. Uh, we do have the Japanese beetle here as well. It hasn't been a big problem for us. Uh, yes, they have gotten some of the sweet potatoes here. But I always try to leave some of the Pennsylvania smart weed around. And when they get their flush of them, you'll see them all over the Pennsylvania smart weed. And you can see there are some of those grassy weeds in here as well. Uh, parsley Thea had harvested before. These are extra uh, tomato plants stuck over in here. The um, Thea came through and did some weeding around so that, so that our strawberry plants can get a little bit better of a shot here as well. Pulled the tomatoes off to the edge. Yeah. And we have a couple of pepper plants in there as well. And this is where all of the uh, all of the uh, red onions were that Thea is working on now. Our last bunch of red onions. Uh, still some in here. And over here, the basil. We understand that when these guys these guys produce absolutely beautiful flowers. So see how that happens. And Thea is about to cover up the dill over here as well. But the uh, Thea absolutely loves the basil. Um, I can't remember the name of this basil. Herbs are doing well, considering how dry it's been here. Uh, pretty darn well. So that's about it. Sorry this video is much longer than I'd hoped for it to be. And I sort of babbled on through this one. I got to get back out and back. I was thinking about going up to the second food forest and give you an update up there. I might do that, uh, but I got to get some more road work done while the weather is still available for me to do that road work. So I always love to hear how everybody else's gardens are doing. Uh, a shout out to Tim from Tim's Permaculture Homestead. Boy, uh, life throws us some real curveballs at time, times, and it is tough to deal with things. and. We're really fortunate that things have worked out for us for this season, but the stink bugs have been here for last year and this year. I don't know why they aren't in high numbers yet. Uh, I anticipate that we will have some significant issues in the future, uh, and we'll have to deal with that in a similar way that Tim's talking about dealing with it in the future as well. So if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and by all means, folks, stay safe, take good care of yourselves, and think about gardening. Bye-bye now.